to worship with St. Mark Lutheran Church in Dunedin, Florida. My name is Ann Harmon. I'm an intern pastor. Pastor Katie Fast is on vacation this week. There are a few announcements for today. Dorothy Martin is recovering from surgery after a fall on Easter Sunday. She is now in rehab at St. Mark Village. Her daughter Suzanne requests that cards continue to be sent to Suzanne's home. Dorothy is most appreciative of your prayers and outreach. Suzanne also requested prayers for her husband who is experiencing a health issue and could use our prayers for his healing. The Lovering family is planning a celebration of Christian hope for Mickey Lovering on Saturday, April 17th at 1 o'clock p.m. at the church. If you will be attending the funeral, please RSVP to the office by this Monday. The family needs to make decisions concerning an indoor or outdoor service. The food pantry is in need of cereal, peanut butter and jelly, ramen noodles, and this week they made a specific plea for canned vegetables. The title confirmation, confirmation class meets today at 11 o'clock outside. Your financial support of this congregation supports our many efforts to bring God's justice, healing, and comfort to the world. You can mail your tithe to the church. We have also made online giving possible. See our website for details. Worship next Sunday, April 18th, is at 9.30 and will be celebrated outdoors. There will also be an online service available. Have a blessed week. We give thanks for the gift of baptism. If you have a bowl of water near you, I invite you to dip your fingers in it and make the sign of the cross on your forehead, the sign marked at baptism as we begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like oceans that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, and also with you. We pray together as one body of Christ, distanced by location, but united in love and concern. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed of those are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. John's Gospel was written for those who would never have the opportunity to meet Jesus face to face. Through this gospel, 
we have our own encounter with Christ through the written text. Today, I want to try to honor the author's intent. I hope that together we can enter into the story to see, hear, and touch Jesus. As we begin, there are themes and symbolic images that bring deeper meaning to this text. Light and darkness are recurring images that represent belief and unbelief. Those who are believers or who come to belief are met in daylight or enter the light. Think of the blind man who comes to sight or the Samaritan woman who meets Jesus at a well at noon. Both are people who move from darkness to light, from unbelief to belief in Christ. In chapter three, Nicodemus meets Jesus in the dark of night and leaves confused and unsure what to believe. Darkness represents those who live in disbelief, cut off from a relationship with God. In John's gospel, any idea of sin means being outside of a relationship with God. Here, sin isn't about right or wrong actions. It is about the light of faith and darkness of ignorance or disbelief. And finally, the resurrection is seen as returning to the garden where Jesus, who is the word that spoke all creation into being, restores, redeems, and brings new life back into the world. Entwined in today's reading are two resurrection accounts one week apart. In both events, the resurrected Christ appears to the disciples who cower in fear behind locked doors at night. The image of doors calls to mind Jesus who proclaims, I am the sheep gate. The word translated as gate in chapter 10 is the same word translated as door in the resurrection account. Have you ever needed the safety of a locked door? Have you ever known fear that feels like darkness gripping your soul? When have you experienced Christ calming your fear or meeting you behind the locked door of your heart? There are three primary themes from John's Gospel that reach their climax in the resurrection narratives. First, introduced in the prologue of chapter one, Jesus is the Word who spoke creation into being. Jesus, the Word, is God. Second, we come to know Jesus through a personal encounter or experience of Jesus the text of this gospel itself becomes an encounter with Jesus, which brings people to faith in Christ. And finally, through belief in Jesus, we enter an intimate relationship with God, which brings abundant life. That abundant life is fully realized when we become witnesses to the glory, righteousness, and love of God for the world. Through the Holy Spirit, we become the presence of Christ for the world so that all will come to know God. Sandra Snyders says it this way, the community then is the key to Jesus' ongoing presence in the world. The task of the community is to be, through love, Jesus' bodily presence and thus the giver of his spirit to all who will come to believe down through the ages. When have you experienced the presence of Christ through another Christian? How has the Christian community nurtured your faith in Christ? The scene of today's reading begins at evening on the same day as the resurrection. 
see the darkness approaching. We read, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Does their fear of religious authorities who secured the death of Jesus threaten the light of faith at this darkening hour? With the doors locked and fear in their hearts, the gospel simply says, Jesus stood among them and said, peace be with you. From that moment on, peace will be both the gift of God and the tool to discern God's presence and will in our lives. And then we see the most astounding detail. Jesus showed them his hands and side. The resurrected Christ, who is God, still bears the mark of death on his body. We hear that through those resurrected wounds, the disciples saw the Lord, believed and rejoiced. Because of their encounter with the wounds of the resurrected Christ, the disciples came to belief. As I reflected on this text this week, I came to appreciate the trauma the disciples and those around Jesus must have experienced. Sadly, crucifixion was a brutal trauma inflicted on communities to maintain power and control. The disciples could identify with the wounds of Christ as their own wounding. I wonder how often you and I hold an expectation that God will take away our wounds rather than heal our wounds. There is a difference. What does healing, resurrection, or redemption mean if our wounds are still present? If there is power to bring belief through the wounds of Christ, can our wounds have a similar power in the world? Jesus repeats the greeting to the disciples who have just professed belief. Peace be with you. Now adding, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. He breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. The text evokes images from the creation story in Genesis where the Spirit hovers over the water and God breathes into the nostrils of human beings, making them living things. What peace do you long for today? Do you sense the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life? And where is God recreating life in you? In the twilight scene, Fearful disciples gathered, encountered Christ, and experienced the joy of the resurrection and the call that we all receive to carry on the work of Christ. The story easily could have ended there, except one disciple, Thomas, was missing. We don't know where he was on the first night of the resurrection, but he missed Jesus' visit. He was still in darkness and disbelief. A week later, the disciples are gathered again behind locked doors, and Jesus appears. He immediately seeks out Thomas with an invitation to believe and offers the proof Thomas asked for. Here, Jesus gives us one more example of how we are to be witnesses to the presence of Christ in our lives. He shows Thomas his wounds. Having seen the wounds and hearing Jesus' invitation to believe, Thomas makes the extraordinary proclamation in all of Scripture. He cries out, My Lord and my God. Thomas, 
is the only person in all of Scripture to call Jesus God. In John's Gospel, Jesus is divine. Jesus is God. And through Jesus, you and I and all who believe are united as one with God and with Jesus. We become the presence of God in the world, both individually as Christians and collectively as the church. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, individual lives are changed. Systems of injustice are confronted. Those who are marginalized find welcome and acceptance. Those who suffer find comfort and none are left in need. People find deep meaning and purpose in their lives. But it all begins with a personal encounter with Christ. John's Gospel was written so that you and I might have an encounter with the risen Christ. Once we have come to faith through our own experience of Christ, our lives become the witness that leads others to their own encounter with Christ that draws them to faith and the heart of God. It happens in simple conversations. It happens in loving gestures and compassionate care. It happens when we show up to be present to the pain of another. It happens when we find the grace to include rather than exclude. It happens when we speak out for justice and mercy. It happens when the deep needs of the world are met and our neighbor next door finds in us a loving friend. It happens every time we let God live in and through us. Saint Teresa of Avila knew the power of God's presence living in and through us. I would like to conclude with her words. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Amen.
Let us pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are made new in the risen Christ. With faith and trust, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. O God, your Son breathed the Holy Spirit into us to make us your presence in the world. May our lives be a living testimony of the resurrection of Jesus, who redeems the world with love and grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your people the wisdom and dedication to renew the face of the earth as a witness to your care for all creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others as an extension of your mercy and care for all people. Make us your hands and heart in the world, announcing your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you give us fellowship with one another in faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be a witness to your presence among us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, in the risen Christ, you promise the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We raise our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.